Welcome to episode 8 of the Wood Whisperer video podcast. I'm your host, Mark Spagnolo, and today I think I'm going to do a lot of talking. Now, I was planning on making this a typed text post, but I figured you'd be much happier seeing my smiling face instead of reading some boring old text. So today, we're going to talk about science. Well, don't worry. I promise it'll be interesting and helpful. Now, if you haven't experienced it already, you'll soon realize that many woods change color over time. Since our design choices often depend on the colors we select, it's critical that we understand what the piece will look like tomorrow, next year, and 10 years from now. So let's dig right in. Now, Nicole and I have been spending the last few evenings giving our business website for Markswood Creations a complete overhaul. Part of the plan includes an updated picture gallery. Well, I was going through all my old woodworking pictures and I came across this picture of my router table just after I completed it. The Paduke trim is a screaming orange-red color and the cherry drawer fronts are almost indistinguishable from the maple door that's on the bottom. A friend of mine once described this piece as a router table in drag. Now, fast forward two years, and here's what the piece looks like today. Aside from the fact that it's a little beat up, notice the dramatic difference in the colors. The Paduke has turned a much duller dark burgundy color, and the cherry has turned into that classic medium brown aged cherry color. And now it's quite obvious that the drawers are cherry and the bottom door is maple. Now, when I made this piece, I was well aware that the color changes were going to be in store for it, but since it was for shop furniture, I didn't really care. But imagine if I made this piece for my living room and I wanted all the drawers and the doors to look similar. I'd be pretty disappointed right about now. And to further complicate things, look at how drastic and obvious the difference is between the heartwood and the sapwood in the two top right drawers. As woodworkers, we have a wonderful palette of colors to choose from when it comes to our hardwood selection. Yellow heart, purple heart, and paduke, just to name a few, are all prized for their amazingly vivid colors. Now, we know what these woods look like when they're fresh cut, but what do they look like after several years? Now, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go over every wood out there, but I'd like to at least highlight a few of the common exotics, as well as discuss some of the science behind the wood colors themselves and the differences between heartwood and sapwood. And if I find any links relevant to wood colors, I will post them in the write-up that accompanies this podcast. So you might be wondering what makes wood colored in the first place, and why are some boards streaked with light areas and dark areas? And if you weren't wondering, then sit down and shut up and learn something for once. Sorry about that, just had a flashback. Well, anyway, what you're looking at when you see the distinct line between a dark color and a lighter colored area, like on this piece of zebra wood, actually, this is the separation of heartwood and sapwood. Now, the sapwood is nearly always a light cream color and the heartwood is usually a darker color. Now, as the wood transitions from sapwood to the heartwood, the cell's walls will contain compounds known as extractives. These extractives serve several functions, including decay resistance and durability. But the property that we're interested in today is the fact that they're usually pigmented. Now, this pigment is what gives the wood its characteristic color, walnuts brown, purple hearts purple, and so on. And as a result, the heartwood is what we as woodworkers are usually interested in. Now let's take a look at good old cherry. When freshly milled, cherry is a pale, sort of pinkish, light brown color. Now I just ran this section here over the joiner to expose uh, some fresh wood. Now over time, it'll age to become a dark, rich, reddish brown color like the rest of the piece. Uh, this actually has about two years of exposure on it. The contrast is just amazing. Now, as with most woods, this color change can be accelerated with sun exposure. Even just a few days in direct sun will make cherry a significantly different color. Now, out of the sun, cherry will take somewhere around, I don't know, maybe six to eight months to change. Now, let's take a look at some paduke. Now, when it's first cut, paduke is almost an unnatural bright orange color. It's really amazing. Over time, though, it does change to a dark reddish brown, as you saw in the pictures of the router table. You can even see here where one board was resting up against this board and actually caused the uh, color change to slow down a little bit. And lastly, let's take a look at some purple heart. When it's fresh cut, the wood turns a grayish brown color. This is pretty alarming if you're using the wood for the first time, but don't worry, the elements will bring the purple color back in no time. 
Just keep working on the project and within a day or two, the color will be a nice vivid purple. Now over time, quite a long time actually, Purple Heart will start to turn more of a dark brown with uh, sort of a purple hue. Now I actually have a couple pieces that are over three years old and they're still a vivid purple. Now if your goal is to maintain a bright vivid color in just about any wood, you've got an uphill battle ahead of you. You could slow down the process by keeping the wood out of direct sun and using a, a finish that contains UV absorbers. In fact, many spar varnishes and urethanes contain UV absorbers and might be a good option for the task of maintaining color. But the sad truth is nothing will completely stop the change. It's pretty much inevitable. And the only way to get the color back is to refinish. So you might want to consider using a very light finish, maybe just a few coats of an oil varnish mixture uh, that can be sanded and recoated as needed to bring the color back. The take home message today is that we need to be aware of the potential color changes and that we need to make the recipients of our work aware of the color changes as well. Now, if you find yourself mesmerized by some brightly colored exotic wood during your next trip to the hardwood dealer, make sure you do your research before making a big purchase. Many a woodworker has fallen victim to the engaging allure of that sweet siren Paduke. Oh, if we could only get the color back that we had when we first met. So when selecting new exotic woods, I suggest doing a Google search first. And if that doesn't yield anything, then just go to a few woodworking forums and search the archives or even post a new question. You can even find a few links to forums right there on the Wood Whisperer homepage. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this very short and very talky edition of the Wood Whisperer. As always, be sure to visit the website at www.thewoodwhisperer.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email us at thewoodwhisperer at gmail.com. So, until next time, ciao.